In today's video, we're going to take a look at email deliverability, setting it up in your hosting, uh, setting up emails in your web hosting so your Joomla sites can send out mail and it get delivered. Blah. That was kind of rough, wasn't it? Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. And thanks for tuning in to today's Watch Me Work live stream. Uh, again, final apologies for bailing on you two weeks in a row, three weeks a row, uh, three weeks ago. Uh, I had crisis come up on my server and I had to bail on the stream. But uh, if that happens in the future, just follow me on at Basic Joomla on Twitter and I'll put updates there. All right. So uh, in order for our mail to get delivered these days, everything has to be set up really well on your web hosting account because uh, email uh, uh, hosting companies and the big email delivering companies like Google, Outlook, Hotmail, which is the same thing, they are really checking into the setup of your mail, of your domains for sending mail on your web hosting or else they will just not accept your mail. Interestingly, uh, one of the things that uh, they are looking for involves they're looking for a human touch they're actually looking to make sure if human beings have set things up and are interacting with these settings in order for them to know that it's not just someone who set up a server and is sending spam so we're going to take a look at four things today talk about well, look at three things talk about a fourth thing and maybe something bonus that i'll show you about called gray listing uh, we're going to look at dkim spf reverse dns and dmark so without further ado, let's head on over to the screen and pay attention to things there. Now, I noticed that my picture is not in the right hand corner. Do, do, do. Okay, well, while I'm sorting this out, you'll see right there on the screen, head on over to basicjoomla.com forward slash giveaways, enter to get some good Joomla prizes for you to use and a great some great uh, stuff to listen to while you're working on your Joomla sites. There we go. Now, I am going to go into the control panel for my basicjoomla.com uh, domain. And uh, it is here that you will um, find some handy dandy tools, especially if your host uh, is uh, using cPanel 78. If your host is using cPanel 78, your hosting company is using cPanel 78, when you go to the mail section, you will see an area called email deliverability. Now, if your host is, if this is not there in your cPanel hosting or in whatever hosting solution that uh, that you are using, uh, then I will, we're, we are going to look how to manually do some of the things that we are going to automatically do through email deliverability. Now we're going to click on email deliverability and it's going to take a look and see if I have things set up properly for the different domains and subdomains in my hosting. You'll see basicjuma.com is not, it says problems exist, DKIM and SPF. And the reason that that's not there is because I went and broke things so we could fix them for this live stream. All right, so the first thing that we're going to look at is DKIM. And uh, let me just bring up a link here. I will put links to this in the description, the video description below. All right, DKIM. So basically, domain keys identified mail. Domain keys identified mail, DKIM lets an organization take responsibility for a message that is in transit. The organization is a handler of the message, either as its originator or as an intermediary. Their reputation is the basis for evaluating whether, the whether to trust the message for further handling, such as delivery. Technically, DKIM provides a method for validating a domain name identity that is associated with a message through a crypto cryptographic authentication. So basically, what DKIM is, is when a mail is sent, it has this key put into it, and it says, hey, this mail is from, you can look at my look at my domain and then look at where this domain is hosted and you will see that I have the secret key that is there on the server. And so um, that's just, now we're back here in cPanel here in the email deliverability. 
Let's click manage. You could just click repair, but then you don't get to see the magic that is happening there. And we will just go first of all. All right, so you'll see a DKIM record does not exist for this domain. And then the properly configured DKIM key, the record must use the server's DKIM key. So there's the key that is on the server. So let's see here. Uh, they will have a name, default.domainkey.basicjuma.com, period. And you can actually, I don't know if you can edit that. You can copy it if you're going to paste this in yourself. And here is the key with all of its huge mixed up gobbledygook glory. All you have to do is click install the suggested record if you're good with that. And I'm usually good with it. Uh, if you send mail from another server, you must use this server's DKIM key on the remote server, as you will see. So if you are sending mail, if I was sending mail through basicjoomlet.com, but I had a hosting account uh, on a different server, and say I had a, um, in that case, maybe a um, help desk, and I had a help desk in one on a different server that was collecting emails from all over, and I wanted uh, from different servers, and there was a department for basicjoomla.com. Then uh, when you sent a ticket out from that other server, if you're sending it from, say, support at basicjoomla.com, you have to have the DKIM for the basicjoomla.com server, the server that it's on, going out with your email. Otherwise, that is not going to work. So they're just showing you here that if you set up DKIM, you're always going to have to have this key in an email that you're sending through this domain. So we're going to we're going to go install the suggested record. And we see up here it was successfully uh, entered. Uh, let's go back here to my control panel, and now let's go down to the zone for this domain. All right, so I'm in domains and zone editor. This is being a new one. I'm going to manage the zone for basicjoomla.com. This being a new zone, what I'm looking for is probably going to be at the very end. So you see up here, I've got a lot of lines in this zone for um, things that, that go with uh, cPanel and subdomains and all sorts of things. But I'm going to skip to the end and go down to the bottom. And here we will see default domain. Let me make this a little bit bigger here. All right. Default dot underscore domain key. No, that's not it. Uh, yeah, domain key dot basic Joomla dot com. The time to live, 3600. Um, in, I need to see what's at the top of the, con the, the top of the page to see what's there. Oh, class, okay. And then this is a text record. And here is the information that was just previously seen in that field. Now, uh, in the uh, text field. That's where the, um, the the domain key goes. Now, let me make this small again. If you don't have a handy dandy tool like this uh, email deliverability, there's an older version of cPanel that actually has DKIM and I think it's called email authentication is that old area and you can still do it this way. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to take, you want to find the information that you want so you would have to find the the domain key for on, on your server that should go there and you would basically go up to add a record and then you would click let's go drop down you're going to add a text record and that's where you would put the information that you see down here default dot underscore domain key dot basic dot com or of course your domain time to uh, time to live it's a text record and you would paste this inside be super careful when you're editing your zones because you can mess things up real good uh, you have access here but uh, through cPanel but yeah you, uh, that's why I really like the tool that comes along with with cPanel for just doing this automatically but you can create a zone and put the valid zone name and you have to have everything just right but that's how you would do that manually all right I'm gonna cancel that next so that's uh, DKIM setting up DKIM for your domain Next, let's go to back to email deliverability. And we're going to see that now here there's a problem with SPF. Um, uh, and that's not the sunblock, sun protection factor. Uh, that is sender policy framework. 
Let me get a link for that for us to check out and see what sender policy framework is. And for this one, we're off to Wikipedia. Hope you don't mind me reading things out here. Just makes it clear. Uh, sender policy framework, SPF, is an email authentication method designed to detect forged sender addresses in emails. Email spoofing a technique often used in phishing and email spam. SPF allows the receiver to check that an email claiming to come from a specific domain comes from an IP address authorized by that domain's administrators. Okay, there's that human touch again. Uh, SPF, if it's set up, a human being has gone in and set that up properly. Uh, and with regard to spoofing, basically uh, what is happening here is that, uh, so I'm bas you know, basicjumo.com. That's my domain. Say I send an email out from it, and uh, the uh, and Gmail says, "Oh, here's an email from Tim at basicjumo.com." By the way, that address isn't working. So if you sent something to it, uh, send send it again to support at cybersalt.com. Anyway, so it looks at the email and says, "Oh, basicjumo.com." I wonder what IPs are allowed to send this. So it looks on the server. It looks in the zone. It says, "Oh, this IP one two three four." That's the only one allowed to send mail for basicjumo.com. Well, where did we get this email from? Oh, we got it from that? Great, this is the real deal. Now, if someone says sends email from at basicjumo.com pretending to be me, they can't do it through my server, through that IP. And so uh, what Gmail would do is say, hey, this says it's from basicjumo.com, but that's not an IP that's authorized to send this. We're just tossing it. Nope, that is wrong. We won't deliver it. All right, so that's sender policy framework. And again, in order to fix that, we scroll down to a SPF record does not exist for this domain. So this is in the email deliverability section in cPanel. Uh, and so an SPF record does not exist for this domain. To properly configure your SPF record, you must include the following mechanisms. The IP, basicjoomla.com for the name, and this is the value. So again, this would be a text record. Now, so you need to um, find out the IP that your account sends mail from if you don't have this tool. And then what you're going to do is gather together that information and you're going to make a text record. And we'll take a look at what that looks like right at the end. Now, there's interesting here. Um, and perhaps you have, as we saw in the uh, discussed previously with DKIM, perhaps you have a number of servers that send mail from basicjumla.com, different IPs. So what you want to do in that case is add a, a, a listing of those IPs. And to do that here, we can go customize. Uh, and, that, and what you will see down here is that you can add additional hosts or you can add additional MX servers or you can add additional IP address blocks and you can also add the IG, IP address blocks that are IP uh, version 6. So let's say um, I also sent email from, uh, we'll just make one up here, let's copy this, control copy and I'm gonna add a new IP. You would just paste it in there, whatever the domain is that you are adding, I don't know, 14 or whatever. And then once you've got everything you want, then you would later on go down and install the customized record. And here's what the current configuration would look like down here at the bottom, all right? Um, now, the other cool thing is you can ch click, uh, check this box and then you see down here it says uh, it will change this tilde all to dash all and that will exclude all other hosts and as always in cPanel they've got a lot of helpful information here and you could click this it says select this checkbox to exclude all other hosts if you've entered all of the hosts that you wish to send mail for your domain all right all right so uh, we'll just leave that check there, but I am going to take out this IP here and we're going to go up here and uh, we will install this customized SPF record or let's just go back and we will see here that uh, we'll just install the one that we want the way that we wanted. 
Um, it don't, yeah. Although that is not customizing it for um, for that. This is the only server sending mail for that. So why don't I just go down there and customize? Sorry, a little blip in my plan there. All right, use the all entry. We're going to install that. We get the notification in the top right here that has been installed. Now let's just go check out the zone so you can see what it should look like. Domains, do, do, do. I scrolled too far. Domains, zone editor, manage. We'll go to the end and we will uh, come check down at the bottom and we see basicjula.com, a text record, and there it is, SPF, just exactly what we were putting in that we wanted. And there's the dash all. So now when we go back, we will go to email deliverability and wait for that. And we see everything is valid. Now everything is valid, but there's a third thing that email deliverability is checking in cPanel and that's reverse DNS. All right. So let's just go in. And the reason that I did not break that for today is because as someone uh, who uh, has a, it, with a web hosting account, if you're not a server admin, you don't have access to change reverse DNS. I have that because this is hosting that my company provides, um, but uh, I'm not going to show you that today because it's something you don't have access to. If uh, with my, the company I have my servers with OVH and they are in the in the Montreal data center where my servers are, um, I can go into my OVH control panel and I can see the list of all the IPs that I have assigned and that I'm using on my server, and then I can set up reverse DNS. Now let's take a look at that, uh, but still, you can still ask for it to be set up if it's not for your domain. All right, so let's go down here. What is reverse DNS? Back to Wikipedia. All right. Reverse DNS redirects here for Java like name convention. Uh, that's it. Uh, sorry. In computer networks, a reverse DNS lookup or reverse DNS solution, RDNS, is the quer querying technique of the domain name system to determine the domain name associated with an IP address. The reverse of the usual forward DNS lookup of an IP address from a former, from a domain name. So what reverse DNS does is it uh, it looks at the um, at the uh, domain name and the IP address that it is running on. If you have a dedicated IP, so if you're uh, and I th I think I have basicjuno.com and a dedicated IP, then basically that is the uh, your the reverse of your DNS should point to your domain. Uh, I, as you can tell, I'm stumbling through it. I don't fully understand how this works, but I understand that it is another check to make sure that traffic coming from your domain is coming from, or that claims to be coming for your, your, from your domain is actually coming from the server that your domain is on. It's not being spoofed or wrecked or anything like that. Um, uh, for instance, uh, it says here the process of, uh, of reverse resolving of an IPS uses the PTR records. Uh, RDNS involves searching domain name registry and registrar tables. This may be used to try to identify the originator's domain name to track, for example, a spammer sending emails or the domain of computer trying to break into a firewall or something trying to hack the system. So reverse DNS says, hey, this is who I am. And if it's set up properly, they trust you. If you, uh, it's like uh, if you have your driver's license and you're trying to get into an establishment and you have to prove your identity or you're trying to get on a flight, you hold up your card and it says, this is who I am. And they say, yeah, that's legitimate. So you're legitimate. Uh, if you hold up false ID that doesn't have your picture on it, you say, hey, this is me. This is let me on the plane. And they look and say, no, 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 that's not you. We don't trust you. You're not being honest about who you are. So in a C panel here, you want to make sure in all of your stuff, you want to make sure that your reverse DNS points to the pro to the proper domain. Now, as I said before, this is a um, 
IP address that is dedicated for basicjoomla.com. Basicjoomla.com is the is the only website using that IP address. You might, if you're on shared hosting or you don't have a dedicated IP, you might see something here in the value of, uh, for instance, on this server, purple.cybersalthosting.com. So I have a lot of clients that are not don't have unique IPs, and um, the reason, uh, and so the reverse DNS for the IP they're using is purple.cybersalthosting.com. And so when they send mail or when they're doing things, uh, when their stuff is happening from their account and going out, it says, they say, who are you? And it says, well, really, I'm just one of the people here on this domain. And then they check and they say, oh yes, okay, we see we see that domain's legitimate and we and we see what's going on. So basically we'll, 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 we'll trust you as who you are. All right, I, th I think I've got that right. If I have it kind of wrong, you always correct me and put it in the um, in the uh, in the chat. Uh, hey, listen, just a side note: Why do you want to use an, a, a dedicated IP for your web hosting? I'll tell you why. If you are sharing an IP with other people on shared hosting, and one of those people, let's say they uh, they write down their password and they uh, leave it on their desk, and someone picks it up and starts sending spam through their email account. Or maybe they answer a phishing email saying, oh, we please log into your email because there's a problem. We just need to confirm your password. And they don't realize that that's a hoax. And so they give it away and suddenly spam is going out from their account. When that spam could get that IP on a block list. And once that IP is on a block list, everybody who shares the use of that for their hosting is blocked as well. So what I like to do I'm not really a hosting company. I'm a, I'm a company that provides hosting for my clients. What I like to do is have my clients each using their own IP because it protects them from service interruption if somebody else does something wrong or if someone else accidentally sends spam or whatever. And it also protects the other clients from them if they get hacked. So uh, just a word about dedicated IPs there. All right, so if you check on cPanel or if you look up to see if the reverse DNS is set up properly for your domain and it's not you need to contact your hosting provider and say oh uh, would you please set up the reverse DNS for my domain uh, the IP that my domain is using it's supposed to be pointing to this domain which is probably their server domain or their hosting domain and then the person, your host, can then go and set things up properly. So you have access through cPanel to see if things are not set up properly, but you don't have access to go and change this. And uh, it can take a little while for this to resolve when that gets changed properly, which is why I didn't break it today. That's reverse DNS. All right, that's three things. SPF, no, sorry, DKIM, SPF. Uh, reverse DNS and now the next thing we'll talk about is DMARC. Now DMARC has nothing to do with this email deliverability here in cPanel but it does have something to do with email deliverability uh, because the um, uh, it is another example uh, or evidence of the human touch in setting up your server. So let's take a look and see what DMARC is. I have a couple of links here. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. DMARC. DMARC, which stands for Domain Based Message Authentication, Reporting, and Conformance, is an email authentication policy and reporting protocol. And it says it builds on the wide, widely deployed SPF and DKIM protocols, adding linkage to the author from domain name published policies for recipient handling of authentication failures and reporting from receivers to senders to improve and monitor protection of the domain from fraudulent email. So what's going on there? What does that mean? What is DMARC? DMARC is this. DMARC is setting up uh, some rules so that people that get mail from your domain know how to know how to report to you what's going on with it. So, for instance, uh, one of the settings that we'll see is that you can say, if anyone is pretending to be me, 
if mail comes from any domain other than the ones that I have set up in DKIM and SPF, uh, please let me know. And I will, I, I want to be aware of that. I'll do something about it. I'll look into it, uh, whatever. And so basically each email, per, each internet company that's receiving your email can read your DMARC listing in the zone. This is another thing we'll add to the zone. And they will send you a report each day and say, here's the emails we got from you. They're all good. Oh, but no, or here's the emails we got from you. But there's a couple that were uh, that were um, that were not from you, but they someone said they were from you, and we're letting you know about that. And the reason, again, when we talk about the human touch, DMARC, uh, when you have this set up, the companies say, hey, you know, spammers don't set that up because spammers don't want to know that uh, they're sent. You know, they don't want Yahoo to tell them that they're sending spam. They already know they're sending spam. And uh, so um, by having DMARC set up in the zone for your domain, you're, that's another evidence that you are a real person, that you're playing by the rules, and that gives cred to the emails coming from your domain. And of course, this is all super important, if you're, especially if you're sending out newsletters or bulk email. That's technically what newsletters are. Um, because if you're sending out bulk email, the people receiving thousands of emails, like the, uh, the internet companies, when Gmail receives a couple thousand emails from you, they're really suspicious of that. And so they, they, they'll they look at this stuff and they'll say, oh, they've got DMARC. Okay, that's another plus for them. Uh, now, an overview of DMARC. We can click on this link here. All right. Uh, Email authentication technologies, SPF and DKIM, were developed over a decade ago in order to provide greater assurance on the identity of a sender of a message. Adoption of these technologies has steadily increased, but the problem of fraudulent and deceptive emails has not abated. It would seem that if senders used these technologies, then email receivers would easily be able to differentiate the fraudulent messages from the ones that properly authenticate it to the domain. Unfortunately, it's not worked out that way for a number of reasons. Now, I'm not going to read this whole page to you, but I will paste the link here. Uh, but you'll see many senders have a complex email environment with many systems sending email, often including third-party service providers, ensuring that every message can be authorized. Uh, authenticated by using SPF or DKIM is a complex task, particularly given that these environments are in a perpetual state of flux. All right, so here you can read a whole lot more about that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to set up, and then you can figure out how it works. But we get down to this mail flow down here because there are some options that you can choose. What do you want to know? Uh, let's just follow through this little chart here. That's you, the green person, or me. Uh, you compose an email and you send it. When it's sent, the DKIM, the key, is inserted in the header and the email sent to the receiver. All right, so then it goes down through here and this gets to the receiver. This is the blue server. First, the server goes through some standard validation tests. That's looking for your IP. Is it on a, is it on a, a blacklist? Um, various things like that. Uh, because if it's on a black, if your IP is blacklisted, they're not even going to bother looking at this other stuff. Then they'll go and they'll validate and apply your policy. They'll look for your verified DKIM domains. They'll retrieve the envelope from via SPF and then they'll apply the appropriate policy, the DMARC policy that you'll set up. And down here, you have these options for the policy. Um, if, it's, if it's passed, then great. It goes to uh, this blue person that you're sending the email through and you'll see it goes through their anti-spam filters and their whole system. If it's quarantined or if it fails the DMARC policy, then what they do is they make a little report they and then they will send you that information and saying hey uh we got a whole bunch of great emails from you legit stuff we pass them along but we got some that were a little hinky and we quarantined them and we've got some that are just plain old rejected and here's the information on those and then they will send it to you so you'll see that uh in here this especially this part here this is the we want to deal with humans part and basically by setting up the kim uh, sorry setting up dmark you are saying hey here's what i want you to do when you're processing mail from my domain all right so 
Let's take a look at a sample DMARC text record. All right, and I have this URL here. We might skip back a little bit there. All right, en enhanced security for forge spam DMARC. Add a DMARC record. So let's take a look. I know I have a text down here. All right, uh, uh, da, 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 da. let me just scroll. Where is that here? Let's see, example text records. Huh. I'll tell you what, I do have one right here that I will show you. Uh, I have one set up. Uh, I think what I wanted to show you here was some of the different things that you can do in creating a text record and putting in here. Um, common tags used in DMARC text records. V is required, so the protocol version must be DMARC1. P is required, sets how your domain handles suspicious, suspicious messages. Uh, uh, none, quarantine, or reject. So you've got this P equals. So if you want no action taken, um, you just get, your messages will just get logged and you get a daily report. Quarantine means mark the message as spam and hold it for more processing. And uh, reject, cancel the message so it's not sent to the recipient. So this is what you'll put in your record telling people, receive, companies receiving mail from your domain, what to do with stuff that doesn't fit. All right. Um, it sets, uh, now uh, here's some optional ones. Percentage, this, uh, uh, sets the percent of suspicious messages that the DMARC policy applies to. So if, uh, uh, anyways, I won't go through all of this list, but I just want you to see here's what's required and some options for it and how, and we're going to take a look at deploying it. All right, so here, oh, here we go. Here's example text records. If you want to set up a DMARC text record for your domain and uh, you want to create a text record and, and you want no action taken, this is what your text record will, what will be in the text record for your DMARC. If you want quarantine, you're going to have something like this, P equals quarantine, where here, this is P equals none. And here's also with a percentage five that we looked at earlier. And what's important here is this is the, you have an email in here where your reports are going to be sent to. All right. And then that's, re and then it shows uh, example text, reject message. Reject 100% of messages that appear to be from your domain, but don't pass DMARC checks. And here's what you can see the action here is, uh, P is to reject. So you have a whole bunch of options for the kind of information that you want. And then you can set up that record. All right, so let's see how to add a DMARC record in cPanel. And to do that, I'm going to use a link from a different hosting company other than mine that shows how to do it. All right, let's go over here. This I, I know this is kind of a little bit technical or muddied some it, it, sometimes it does it gets in my mind too so it might not be flowing out exactly but basically we're, we're creating a text record in your zone that tells other companies what to do with email that is received from you or email that they get that's supposed to be from you but isn't and this gives a human touch and gets your mail more deliverable all right, so setting up a DMARC record. Log into cPanel, click on Zone Editor under Domains. You'll see a list of domains that are being managed by your cPanel account. Click on Manage next to the domain. You'll find you'll then uh, a page with Zone Records. Click Add a Record. All right, and we're going to get down here and we'll look at Step Seven. All right, so here we are logged into cPanel, Domains. We go to the Zone Editor. Right, and uh, here's the list of all the domains being managed. I only have one on this account, so we will click Manage. Next, I'm going to look just to see if I have this set up, uh, DMARC. I don't have it set up yet, so I'm going to go over here and add a record. In fact, I'll use the drop down and I'm adding a text record. All right, so first of all, you need the valid zone name, so why don't we just click back here uh, the zone name is underscore d mark all right so in this field uh, that's for, sorry for the type where's my 
Okay, I see here. I have notes here as well. So underscore D mark. But what you want to do is go underscore D mark and then it's dot your domain. And then in zones, always remember to put the dot after your domain. It's important. All right. So, it, you know, so this is underscore D mark uh, dot basic Joomla dot com dot. All right. Time to live is, uh, oh boy, I forget whether that's, I think that's, uh, I think that's seconds or is it minutes to live? I think that's minutes, 3,600 minutes. That's, that's how good this is. And then if someone looks to see a zone record and they see that it's older, then it goes and looks for the latest information. So the higher the time to live that you use in a zone record, I believe the longer it takes for changes to it to be picked up and resolved in different places. All right, we're making a text record, right? And then the next thing that we want to do is use one of these lines and here's examples here. And we've already taken a look uh, here at some of the options that you can put in. So this is where you're gonna put your own human touch on this. But uh, let's just use one of these lines. I'm going to say reject any, I'm gonna do this one here. So uh, version D mark one, uh, policy is reject. Get what SP is. Uh, oh, they got a whole bunch in here. Um, do, 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 do. That's a complicated one. You know what? I'm just going to use the one that I already have prepared here for my site. Control copy. Uh, you can look at this and figure out exactly what you want to do. Here's one that I use in one of my other domains. Control V. All right. I use this one here, but I'm go. In fact, I'll use a different domain here. It's com. So here we have uh, version D Mark One policy. I have no policy on that. I don't like that. Let's do a policy is a quarantine. All right. Should pick one easier to spell. Q U A R quarantine. And then the address to send the report to is postmaster at cybersalt.com, which is the cybersalt.com is the commercial domain that I use for my business. And basically that's all I need to do. Uh, we'll add that record. And now at the end of today, if I send out any mail from basicjuma.com, uh, I will get a report to postmaster at cybersalt.com saying, here's the mail that you sent. It's all good. If I send no mail today from basicjoomla.com, but someone sends mail from basicjoomla.com and it's spoofed or it's um, it doesn't look like it's coming from me, I'll get a report anyways. Because when someone when they see basicjoomla.com, they'll look up my policy and say, "Hey, we got mail from this guy, basicjoomla.com. What does he want us to do with it? Or, or how how does he want us to report?" A nice thing about getting that report is that if you do have something set up wrong or you set up to send mail from another IP from another server and you forget you have this all set up, you're going to get a report saying, uh, something's not right. We got this mail, but it doesn't look like it's from you. Just letting you know, and then you can fix it and it gets your mail delivered. So this is a huge, huge human touch setup for email deliverability and uh, so it's important um, for you to uh, have uh, it's important to have these four things set up there's not going to be any chat because we're not uh, on YouTube there go full screen it's important for you to have these uh, four things set up for your domain that your Juma site is running on so that your email is deliverable especially you want it, I mean, you just need to do this. You need to do this, period. Um, so it's 100% needed. It's 150% or 200% needed if you're sending out newsletters through your domain. DKIM, SPF, uh, contact your host if uh, reverse DNS is not set up properly, like your, your web host, and also DMARC to set up this policy. And those four things will help you get your email delivered. 
and the it, in the heyday of one of my newsletters i was sending a million emails a month to my subscribers i had about 22,000 subscribers i did a newsletter every day for them and uh, that was on my own hosting uh, because to send a million emails through a commercial email sender uh, that uh, that specializes in delivering mail and lists is expensive. I was sending those mails on a $6.95 per month web hosting account, uh, saving myself tons of money. In fact, I wouldn't have sent the newsletter out if I had to pay for the email delivery because there was just, I, I would have been losing, uh, losing money. So it's really, so you can send out your own email your own bulk email if your host allows all right so like on my company i i when i know my clients i let them send as many emails as they want we'll set them up different hosting packages to allow the numbers um other hosts like godaddy if you're you can only send like 250 emails a day i think on one of their packages uh unless you have a, a dedicated server or a virtual server with them anyways you can send your own email through your domain if you set things up properly and your host lets you. Now there's some other things to talk about. I'm gonna talk about gray listing uh, here in cPanel, but I think that wraps it up probably for what a lot of you came here for. If you found this helpful, please like the video and subscribe and, uh, and so others can get it. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or contact me at my new uh, support at cybersalt.com address, which is helping me to manage contact with people as my business is being well my business has been growing my brain is getting older so it helps me keep track of it but if this was helpful uh please uh like the video and subscribe and you'll get notifications of new things stick around if you want to chat and also that's we're just gonna go right into looking at gray listing after i get the zoom link posted so thanks everybody for watching and tuning in today enjoy your gym sites and god bless all right and for those of you that are still here let me post the Zoom link here. I have that up at the top. And I just need to find the chat window. Oh, and I, here's the chat. Hello, Ohio, and hello, Mary. Yes, Mary, I know that, uh, I know that Twitch is often a streaming problem for you. Um, oh, thanks, Mary. For, I just saw your uh, I saw your first comment there, and you're going to rewatch. So good. I'm glad that this was helpful. Hey, you know what? I uh, and especially with Hio here, I'm thinking about just moving Watch Me Work live stream over to YouTube. Not much is happening here on Twitch. Uh, it involves some extra steps, and uh, I have to process everything and upload to YouTube anyway. So. Um, I've just been kind of mentally evaluating whether Twitch is working. The other thing too is that I got an invitation yesterday to join Amazon's influencer program, but I don't have enough followers. I think that Amazon is going to come out with something to compete with YouTube. And YouTube is really wounded right now uh, because there's, a, well, we could talk about later, but I think that Amazon is going to come out with something YouTube-ish that's different than Twitch. Twitch does have the talk show category that I go in, but um, I think they're going to, I, I, I suspect they're going to come out and compete with YouTube on something. So I may be back on Twitch if I do go off. But anyways, just something that I'm thinking about. Um, I do find that Twitch is a little bit, uh, like you said, Mary, uh, you get uh, you get the spinning disks, so the the and it ends up there being much more of a delay than with YouTube. Anyways, it's just what I'm thinking about. Yes, yeah, so I figured that Mary that that would be fine for you because YouTube plays better for you. For Hio, it's sad because he's the one that said, "Man, go on Twitch. Can you go on Twitch?" And um, uh, but I really don't get a lot. I hardly get any traffic or any views on Twitch. It might be maybe I'm not promoting it enough, or it just might not be getting I, I don't know but uh, I, I might just consolidate my efforts and move everything back onto YouTube for now hey it was going to mention about uh, oh and Hio gives me the peace sign that's great um, okay let's head over let me just show you gray listing all right well let's go back onto the screen here 
All right, so here we'll see up in the top right gray listing, which is in the mail. All right. Um, let's just go back and find out where that is in C panel. Uh, gray listing is a really neat thing. It's a tool that you can use to keep spam, uh, to kind of fight off some of the spam that does make it through your spam filters and the filters of your host. Uh, let's see, gray listing. Here it is. It's in the mail section. Configure gray listing. Basically, what gray listing does is if if an, if an email gets through to you as a human being, so after going through that whole flow that we looked at, if an email gets through to you, and but it doesn't but it doesn't have proper SPF set up, I think or DKIM. I think this might just be SPF. We'll look at that. It says it sends a message back to the sender saying, "Oh, can't get your mail right now. Try again in a little bit." Uh, because what happens is spammers tend to not set up their servers very well and they never do get back on that second try. Uh, probably because they're sending out millions of spam. Uh, but uh, maybe, you know, if someone's account was hacked and that's where the spam came from, then possibly. But if it's not set up properly, or, you know, it could actually be someone who is sending legitimate mail, but they don't have things set up for e good email deliverability. Anyways, what gray listing says, yeah, we're kind of gray on this. We're going to put your email off the side. You know, talk to us later. And then the count starts a counter. And if later, you know, if in 20 minutes the the email, you know, the company has gotten your later message and says, oh, here, we'll try again. It says, oh, you know what? Okay, we like how you're set up. We'll accept it. And then it comes out of the gray listing. Uh, so you can turn on or off gray listing for your account and it looks like here when I click eight it does it for all of the sub domains that you might be sending mail through as well you can turn that on or off there I don't know if this is going to okay that's just enable let's take a look at documentation for gray listing uh, this interface allows you to enable or disable gray listing for each domain on your account. Gray listing defends email users against spam. When you enable gray listing, the mail server will temporarily reject any mail from a sender that does not have it, that the server does not recognize. If the mail is legitimate, the server that sent it will try to send the email again after a delay. After a sufficient amount of time, the server will accept the email. And to enable it, you just go in, click on or off. They're not saying what it's uh, the server does not recognize, but I'm pretty sure that it has. I'm know for sure that it has to do with SPF. I don't know if it has anything to do with DKIM, but it's a really cool uh, 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 extra feature to cut down on spam. Uh, if I were to, I can't go in here because it would show you the email addresses of my clients. Uh, but on the server where I have it set up, there's a whole list showing of mails that have been gray listed. And when I look in there, I very seldom ever see anything that's legitimate, but I'll see things like, oh, buy our water purifiers there, blah, 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 blah. And the, it's from some crazy domain that has nothing to do with water purifiers. Or you just, you know, just everything that looks so spammy. And uh, so m my clients uh, that host with me barely get any spam. Sometimes when I'm doing work for them, I notice a message that, that they've gotten and I look into where they're getting it from. Um, and it, it could very well be mail that's come from off of my server, like from another account that they have. But gray listing is sort of a cool last uh, thing at the end that you can do uh, saying, uh, you know, now that I understand DKIM and SPF and, and these other things, I'm going to let my C panel be a little bit more stringent with mail that's being sent. Uh, one of the interesting things that I face or that... Uh, uh, that that I face and I think is common for us with our clients too is having a having a level of security that is more than what our clients want uh, being that um, uh, the fear of losing or missing an important email is keeps people accepting tons and tons of spam because they don't want to turn on filters but it's gotten to the point now where uh, 
you just have to you just have to have things set up properly and you have to have everything set up legitimately to be doing business so it's not i don't think it's unreasonable to expect people emailing you to be up to date on their security and their setups because if they aren't they're threatening your business your livelihood your clients uh they're they're, they're wasting time by allowing spam to get through and um and it's just you know it's 2019 and things have changed do you remember hey chuck good to see you man you remember it used to be many years ago that if you sent out an email and it said uh click here in the email near a link your email would get blocked because at that point, basically, people, uh, it was it was a tactic by spammers sending out a message and they would say, click here to see this. And there's so little clicking here happening that was legitimate at that time. Literally, your email would be, uh, your email would be rejected by a filter because you had click here in it. So it's become a lot more sophisticated. And as we've just seen, there's a lot more uh, that we can set up. And so uh, periodically, I will have a client contact me and say, one of my customers is not uh, is not getting their mail is not getting through, and I'll look into it, and it's because they don't have some their customer doesn't have something set up properly, and so I explain to my client they their server is set up incorrectly, and the security on on my server that uh, protects you. Um, is not allowing it through. So if you'd like me to contact them and, and tell them what needs uh, what, what needs to be done, uh, but just let them know it's because their server is not set up properly and they should talk to their host. For the most part, I, I can't really think of anyone that's really balked at that saying, no, I want, I want bat, I want, I don't, I don't care. Just let everything through. Uh, there is, of course, a, you know, you could just tell them, go ahead and turn gray listing off and you will their mail will get through and uh, you'll see a lot of other things that will get through as well. And then maybe, you know, maybe the person will say, okay, okay, that's enough spam for me. I'll turn the thing back on and I'll let them know. But uh, it's just part of educating our clients that uh, the email needs to be set up properly. Uh, the clients that I have that are sending out their newsletters are really, really happy. Um, I do, I, you know, because I I don't throttle email. Well, I do throttle email. So, for instance, on my list when I send it out, I send out 500 emails every five minutes, and I could probably do more, but I just kind of when my emails go out, they just go out. Um, uh, I'm not worried about dumping 20,000 emails on the server in the first second or the first minute or something like that because they only get delivered at so fast a rate, anyways. Um, but uh, yeah, so my clients are, I have a couple of clients that have 1,200 uh, subscribers. They do a newsletter and they just send it out and it just sits there and it grinds away and it gets delivered and it's, and it's doing it at a really good cost for them as well. Um, all right, yeah, so gray listing. That was a little trick that I, uh, a little extra that you can look for in cPanel. I thought that there would be somewhere that you could see what was gray listed. They don't have that. That would be a neat feature if you could see what was gray listed for your own account. But uh, they don't have that available availability here. Okay. And there's Hyo. Yes, okay. I had to look to see who that is. That looks like a Muppet or something like that saying hi. So... Um, yeah, I hope that that was helpful, everybody. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I could probably just drag this chat over here. People can see it there. Hey, Chayton. Yeah, Amazon SDS for sending out bulk emails, and it works great. Good. Um, yeah, I uh, I used Amazon SES for sending out bulk uh, for setting up emails. Uh, for a project that I worked on last year. That's the, the project I worked on last year that ended up going nowhere, uh, my own personal project. But uh, yeah, I really like the Amazon stuff. Uh, it's a big learning curve for me. But um, 
so I, I had I had WHM, which is the cPanel ho web hosting management software, running on Amazon, and I because I, I thought if that project took off, I would be able to expand uh, the resources right away that it was using. Uh, but um, anyways, the project didn't take off, so I never bothered learning that. And I went back to something that I'm more familiar with for now. But uh, yeah, and it, it's, uh, oh, and you say it's quite cheap too. Cool. Um, nice. Speaking of learning curve, I was working on Asteroid Framework last night. I have a site and I thought I'm just going to sit down and start doing the design for the site. And uh, I was really uh, enjoying it. I was going to drop you a note and say that I was uh, that I was enjoying it. Obviously, I haven't done it for the basicjuma.com site yet, but uh, yeah, it was just uh, it was really really cool. I'm just working down through things, so yeah. So I figured that you would be happy to hear that. Um, so I'm going to uh, yeah. So uh, it's for a client. I'll show you. I'll show you guys. We we'll have to share sites. So it's, it's, uh, this is t terrible, terrible. Uh, this is a WordPress site that I've 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 imported their content into. Um, let's see here. I've imported their content into my um, into a, a Joomla install. Oh, and that's not it there. Huh. There we go. No. Uh, oh, I remember. I've after I've had this so many places where I was working on it. Joomla dot. There we go. So this is like super ugly, but uh, been really enjoying. Really enjoyed moving around and figuring out the layout system as well. It's coming. It's coming. All right. So oh, and this is just the home page. Nothing on it. But um, anyways, I was uh, just slowly putting their content in and trying to salvage their uh, graphics and uh, and uh, just set things up differently. Uh, then this was my big thing, happy thing last night. I actually added a, I think it's a section. No, I added some lines underneath the body here. And this is actually one module here, module position, and then this on three. But anyways, it was, uh, I'm having fun figuring it out. There's lots still to do on this site, but um, um, it's there. And also, everybody, I don't know if you saw this before. This is one of those AppSumo things that came up. But remember that user back, I'm putting this on the site for when I show the client this, um, this feedback button here, which you can draw on the screen or j provide general feedback. Uh, I think maybe we saw this before, but this lets my this will let someone go through and say, "Oh no, this is not uh, really great." And then I think what's this? Let's do arrows. Yes, that's. Uh, whoops. No, let me figure that out. X. Let's see. Nope. I haven't played around with this much. I think okay. Draw an arrow to there. You go. That makes sense. And then you can leave a comment. This is a green arrow uh, anyways this deal is sold out on app sumo so you'd have to go to the monthly one but this is that thing in order to uh send a screenshot to people and i think you cl clip that email address leave a comment so my clients are going to be giving me some feedback i use that on on that so i saw that Vinny was using that as well yeah thanks you guys um 24,000 K downloads this week for total and asteroid this week. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah. I, uh, I, I like it. This, the other, the other thing that's helpful is that my, uh, rocket theme membership is up soon. So, uh, I don't want to renew it unless I really have to. And I thought, well, I've, you know, I've, I want to uh, I've got my membership here and I thought I should just figure that out so that um, just figure that out so I can uh, just make the jump from there I mean if I have clients that uh, are still using rocket theme templates and I still like those templates uh, or people want tutorials on them maybe I'll get them to pay for 
temporary membership or something like that. But anyways, yeah, this is uh, very plain. I need to get some other pictures in there. Interesting about this site. I'll show you the old site here. Uh, this is their old site, the WordPress site. And uh, this was from, a, a, this is a church. So they were using a host that specializes in providing stuff for churches. And uh, it's, it hasn't been updated in a long time. And one of the things that I, I mentioned to the church when I was talking to them, because they were asking about web pages. So for instance, um, uh, let's see, oh, let's go connect, I think is one. Yeah, so this connect, it is all one page. So they've got their different ministries, Body Life Prayer Summit, and this woman's prayer group. And then here's their graphics that were just at the bottom and this line at the bottom of everything. Um, but there's no, there's nowhere to click for this to be individual. And of course, I, and I suggested to them, each of those should be an article so it can attract attention. Plus it's easier for them to edit something individually. So what I did over here on serve, as many of us do, um, sorry, what did I look there? Connect. I just took the content and I just kept saving as copy and only including certain sections there. And now they have individual articles, which is going to be a lot better for SEO. It's also going to be a lot better for them to uh, expand on things. I'm also, I'll also teach them how they can do read more and set things up. So really the project right now is to reorganize all of their content and get them going on a, on a, their new website and then do videos to train them so that they can work on the site themselves. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, but I really like this look and this one over here. I mean, it's all right. You, know, you kind of lose the pictures behind, but, uh, and, and as usual, this is a website that probably was, uh, they're using a template from the company, but, uh, you know, someone has volunteered or has been working, trying to do their best. So, and, uh, and just over the years, it's gotten away from them. This is also another client that when I asked them for a logo, they sent a horrible thing, but they recognized that it was horrible. So um, uh, I, I think after, I'm just going to go with a text header for the name of their church and I'm gonna talk to them later on about if they want to do something for developing a, a new logo or something like that. Anyways, long story short, too late. Bye bye, Andy Miller. Who's Andy Miller? Is that rocket theme guy? Oh, okay. Do you know him, Chayden? Chayden, I, I did post the Zoom link here. Let me, uh, if you have time. Do, 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 let me find, oh, here we go. No, you, yes. Yeah, no, you don't know him. All right, well, we should uh, cage match. There you are. Hello, my friend. I don't hear you yet. Can you hear me? I hear you now. How you doing? Good. So in a cage match, you or him, who would win? I, he would. He would. <laughs> Is that because you're so old? Is he younger than you? Yeah, he, he's old. Uh, that's, that's one of the things. And... Uh, yeah, I've never met him or talked to him or something okay. like that. I just know the guy. I mean, uh, the Rocket Team has been there forever, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, and I like their I like their stuff, and um, oh, I like their stuff. I still like their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, I mean, some of the stuff that Vinny has been doing uh, with UI Kit can is UI Kit work in Asteroid? Can what work in no, UI Kit? No, no, no. So, you know, Astro is all based on Bootstrap 4. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like the, uh, you know, framework it's set up on. So UI Kit is the opposite of, uh, you know, Bootstrap. You know, they, okay. They can't run side by side. You can have one of them, but not both at the same time. Okay. I don't, uh, of course, obviously fully understand all of that, so... I understand this yeah, thing. So pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, but you run, uh, you know, you're trying to run WordPress and Juma side by side. Think of it that way, but only the front end, you know. Yeah. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, how's the weather there today in New York? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's cold. It's quite cold. It's 50 degrees here. How about that? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's like, what is it, four in the morning there for you? Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> Well, with the daylight time, you know, I'm like an hour behind, so it's like 12.30, yeah. Oh, 12.30, okay. Yeah, I got a couple more hours to put it. So you guys use uh, Amazon for doing your bulk sending? Yeah, you know, Amazon actually works great because what you were telling earlier about being able to send out emails from your server, that just doesn't work great because, you know, the way I have it set up on a server, I have like 200 accounts, you know, cPanel accounts. Yeah. And a, a good number of them are people who never even use the email. You know, they use Office 365 or, you know, G Suite or whatever. But then there are others who don't update the website or don't want to pay us to update the website and they get what I would get infected and they're sending out spam. Yeah. So the reputation of the server of the IP address over time has degraded so much that you cannot just build it. You know, by default, the emails are going into spam now. Forget about sending bulk email. Even the transaction <laughs> email, you know, if someone registers on your website, that's going to spam by default. Yeah. So well, for someone who, you know, where email is very important, you have to make use something reliable where the email would be delivered. You know? And yeah. Amazon is, is, is great and cheap. You know? It's like 10, 000, uh, 10 cents for like a thousand emails. It's okay. pretty cheap, you know, compared to, you know, SendGrid and, and all these other people that you work with, you know? Yeah. Uh, when I buy a, a new dedicated IP for a client and put it on my server, I, I go to MX Toolbox here. Right. Uh, we, and then I always do a blacklist check for it. And sometimes... Right. And, 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 you know, you can whitelist it, even if it's blacklisted, you can whitelist it as well. But but with so much spam going on, I mean, anyone could fire up a new server and a new IP and start sending out emails. There is no limit, you know, yeah. on how much you can send. It's like, how many visitors can you have on the website? Yeah. So it, each time the script process, it can then send a thousand emails. It's really a server can keep pumping out emails. So that's why, you know, it's, it's important to use a service like this. And you know, even with Amazon, the problem is the service is that cheap, but the, by default, they don't provide you a way to audit what is sending out, uh, what, how many emails. They just give you a total number. Okay, you have sent 6,000 emails today, and at the end of the month, you get a bill for whatever, you know, 100,000 emails or whatever you have sent. Yeah. And the problem with Amazon is, let's say, one of the websites where you're using Amazon gets hacked or infected or spammed. You know, and it's sending out a thousand emails every hour, all of them spam. What Amazon's going to do is it's going to suspend your whole account. So even though it's only one user or one domain or one email address that's spamming, it's going to suspend the account. And, you know, in my account, I have like 200 domain names, 200 plus domain names. Yeah. Even clients who don't use the hosting use, use that service. So all of their email uh, would, would stop going out. So what we did recently did was we moved the, you know, the marketing uh, clients to other, uh, you know, one account where who use email for marketing, you know, sending out newsletters and stuff, and a transactional one to different account, so who, which are really just transactional emails. And, you know, there's really zero spam there just yeah. to add a little bit of, of diversification to the equation, you know? Yeah, and I think that's why a lot of, Web designers will just let people um, get their own web hosting or set them up with their own account somewhere because it, as much as, you know, when I said that I was sending out a million emails a month for $6.95 on a $6.95 account, mm -hmm. I spent I spent hours every month making sure that was working. <laughs> right. That's right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it just took... Um, I don't know if we have any AOL users listening to this, but man, it just took one lazy AOL user who, ins who would not click the unsubscribe link, but just hit the spam button because they, they no longer wanted my emails after they'd been receiving them happily for years. So they thought, well, spam I don't want this anymore. It's spam. They hit the spam button. And next thing you know, now I'm filling out forms 
uh, with AOL to uh, get them to. Uh, right, right, right. You know, with, with Amazon, so when you're using Amazon or SendGrid or one of these guys, the good thing is you don't have to worry about whitelisting yourself, you know, it, because yeah. you're using their relay. But at the same time, and you know, they have a suspension thing as well. So they're not like if one user spams and, you know, you're out of the game. So, you know, the way they work is if, so your balance ratio should be less than, I think, 5%. So if you're sending 100 emails a day, five of them can bounce. But more than that, then, you know, they're questioning you. Yeah. And if more than 10 are bouncing, then they're going to suspend you. And the spam thing is similar. So they have like 0.5% or 1% for spam. So if you're sending 100 emails a day, five of them can really bounce. And the sixth one can be marked as spam. And they have no problem with that. But as the numbers go up, yeah. then they start to question you and your account. You know? Yeah, I found out recently, too, that um, with Yahoo, and Yahoo and AOL are sharing their their uh, their blacklisting or their whole deliver system right. like that. Um, I didn't post for one week to one of my mailings. I send out, so that mailing I send out on Wednesdays and Sundays, and it goes out 14,000. It's actually 13 something now. Um, I didn't, I didn't send for a week or something, or maybe it was two weeks. Anyways, when I, the next time I sent, they held, they held my mail for a long time and I, I figured out. I think what it was was that they were used to an average amount of email from me over a period of time. And then when I didn't send, the average they were getting from me dropped. And then when I started sending again, it was such a percentage increase, they thought, oh, we better check into this. Because you would watch, they would deliver 50 in an hour, then 50, and then all of a sudden they'd all go. So um, I, right. so if you're sent, if if you're sending consistently at certain levels, I think there's something in their algorithm that says, "Oh, this is normal traffic." But if there's a huge right. if there's a huge spike, it's like, "Oh, what's happened?" Well, let's just hold off on this for a little while. So, right, right, and you know the the, the crazy part about it, there there is no centralized authority managing all of this. So every email server, every provider has their own set of rules on yeah. how they identify and treat that. You know, yeah. people can say. You know, we can send out ten, uh, send in ten thousand emails a second, and we don't care. Or the very next second, they can say you can only send hundred emails a second, and we'll start stopping uh, blocking you right after that. So there yeah. is no written set of rules or or you know some guidelines provided by them. It's, it, all they say is make sure you know your users have double opt-in, you know, which is to put the email and then click the confirmation link, and make sure that you know you have an unsubscribe link. And have your address at the bottom of the email. You know, just the basics. And as long as you do that, you know, you're good. But you know, yeah. Yeah. And then there's then you've got your some of the lesser companies out there that uh, are filtering mail for clients. And I, I one client that just recently uh, they said all oh, this mail's not going through. They send me the bounce message, and I look, and basically um, they uh, that's the uh, reverse DNS wasn't set up properly right right yeah so you know those are the basics so you gotta have a spf record you can have had the kim records that yeah. the DNS. you gotta have the reverse dns for the ip you know that are the basics you can do but more than that it's really the reputation of the server that man you know matters a lot yeah. you know yeah IP sending from, you know yeah um but yeah but so but you get these big companies that are really that use a service like that and it's like, oh, I, so all I did was fix the reverse DNS and it worked and I thought, oh, okay, so it's definitely getting tighter and tighter out there for delivering mail, so. Yeah, 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 sure. Which is good, because I don't like spam. Me neither, yeah, no one likes spam. <laughs> you know, there was this blog post the other day, the guy, you know, back in the day, there used to be pop-ups, like ads. Yeah. So but the guy who developed the first pop-up, I think he wrote the JavaScript or whatever, he wrote an apology letter somewhere online. He was like, I regret making that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Ever developing pop-ups if I may. You know, so yeah. it was like that, yeah. Somebody else would have done it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree, I agree, yeah. But he was like, you know, I, I totally regret why I did it in the first place, you know. I, I would not have done it or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's interesting to see where things uh, things will go next and what they come out with. And right, 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 right. Keeps us in business. Keeps us all in business. Keeping up on the latest stuff. <laughs> totally, I agree. Yeah. So hey, listen, I, I don't know if I told you. Uh, we discussed the other day. Uh, you know, uh, basically, we we sent out this big update for Asteroid last week. Uh huh. And now we are working on, you know, I told you that builder, you know, the website builder. Yes. So that's going to be released in the real near future. So let's say probably in about a month. You know, okay. Of, uh, you know, beginning of May, you know, we'll, we'll send out our first draft to our users, you know, existing users may get premium version or whatever. I don't know. We haven't decided on that part, but it's coming out really great. We're almost done. You know, right now we're in the testing stage. And we're just uh, pushing everything to get get that out of the door. Like I told you, that's one missing piece in our equation that we hope to get done. So I'm really excited for that. Cool. Yeah. For everybody who's listening, uh, Chayton's talking about a uh, a native page building. Um, what what it's extent? Not really. Well, it yeah, would be yeah, yeah. page builder extension, but you know, similar to Asteroid. So you know, the feedback we have for Asteroid is great. Everyone's whoever's using it, you know, whether the person is new to Joomla or the person's, you know, let's say migrating from WordPress, which is, you know, which is very rare. You know, someone migrate from WordPress to Joomla, which, you know, you're, you're one of them. So they love how simple uh, Asteroid is, how well, uh, you know, not well documented. We barely have any documentation. People actually uh, tell us that, hey, you need to improve our documentation or we're going away. But, you know, so we have a lot of videos, you know, the video you have on your channel, how well, at least the video documentation is and how well you know the ui is so really it's based on asteroid you know based out of the asteroid layout manager which is the key to asteroid and and you know uh, it's gonna it's gonna be similar to that but much 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 more powerful you know like like any page builder out there so you know it, that'd be something uh, we would uh, be doing in our templates moving forward and you know i, I think the Joomla community is gonna love it yeah Cool. Well, I'm looking forward to it, and you're going to come and show it on here, right? Yeah, sure. Of course. Why not? Yes, and uh, or we'll talk about it on the podcast if you get that going. Uh, we want to get that. Again, you know, I'm just busy with this thing, you know, yeah. uh, trying to get this out of the door. And once we do get it, yeah, I know Winnie had some advice for us. You know, oh, man, it was three months ago, last year. I still haven't even spoken to him. So I need to speak to him as well, you know, get that going. And once we do, yeah, definitely. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, I think I'm going to wrap that up for now. Stick around after I want to uh, talk to touch base with you a couple of things there, Chayton, but sure. I think I will uh, wrap up this stream. As far as what we've looked at, we actually did quite a bit of, uh, was, Hey, Monday's, uh, um, maintenance Monday live stream. We had some great chat and great discussions, so everybody check that out as well. I mean, it's not just the beginning part, but watch the stuff that comes at the end. But um, anyways, uh, well, everyone, I'm glad I'm glad that I finally got this. Uh, um, I got this live stream in after having to cancel on you a couple of times, but uh, I, I'm uh, getting emails out is something that I really enjoy. And uh, I've, I've had fun, as much as it's been maddening at times, figuring out how to get all these zones set up and get email deliverable is kind of a fun thing, which is probably why I put up with some of the stuff of running my own server. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, I, I'm glad that it happened and uh, looking forward to see what we do next week. I'll keep you updated on whether it's gonna be on YouTube or Twitch, I think probably on Twitch for a little bit till I, I want to get some things tidied up and get some better uh, intros for the YouTube channel. So um, we will see. But anyways, everybody who is in chat and everybody who is lurking, thank you very much. If you have any questions about this stuff, of course, just drop me a line, support at cybersalt.com or leave a comment or uh, at Basic Joomla on Twitter and we will... Um, We'll get things sorted out. So, everybody, have a great rest of your week. Uh, enjoy your Joomla sites, and God bless. <laughs>